So today I found this pristine 2015 13-inch MacBook Air, and it's in awesome condition, and there's only one thing keeping it from being a daily driver. Let's check it out and find out how we're going to fix that. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out this 2015 13-inch MacBook Air. Let's check out the specs real quick and see what we're starting with and see what we need to fix on it. So as we look at the About screen, it shows that this is a 13-inch 2015 2.2 GHz i7. So this is upgraded model, not just the uh, i5. So this was like the $1,200 model when it was sold brand new and it's got the 8 gigabytes of RAM. That's the most important part. You'll find a lot of these with 4 gigs of RAM and that will do it for most daily kind of go on the internet and browse the internet with the browser type stuff. But if you want to do any real work, you really want this 8 gigs. So we got that. Everything's looking good. The HD graphics, 6000. You're not going to do any kind of gaming on this, any kind of intense gaming on it. But this is good enough to drive a 4K monitor at 60 hertz. So we can still get some good work done with this. If we look at the display built in, 1440 by 900, that's a pretty good one for this 13 inch. This isn't the retina display, but it's still a decent display for most daily work. But here we go on the storage tab and we see we've got a 250 gigabyte drive. So 128 is pretty much useless. 250 is a, this will get it done, but it could be better. 500 is kind of the sweet spot on this type of portable and at one terabyte's even better. But what we've got today, we've got a 500 gigabyte M.2 drive that we're gonna put in this, and that's what the mission is for the day. Now, is this always a worthwhile upgrade for this device? Well, let's look at a couple more things to see what we got going on here. If we go back to this about screen and go into the system report, I'm gonna look at the power tab here and look at this cycle count, 23 cycles. That basically means it was either always plugged into the wall and very seldom uh, taken off and used on the lap, or it means that it was very seldom used at all. By the physical condition of this particular one, I can tell you it's in brand new condition. So someone must have bought this and never used it, and I picked it up for about 200 bucks today at a pawn shop. So with the prices of these hard drives finally dropping, I would say yes, definitely, this is a worthwhile upgrade for this machine because once we give it a little bit more storage, then we'll get plenty of more use out of this. Perfect for a student, which is probably where this one's gonna end up with. So what are we gonna need to get this upgrade done? Well, the first thing obviously is a hard drive, and this is an M.2 NVMe hard drive, the same kind that you'd use in a desktop computer or a lot of modern laptop computers. So I got that off of Amazon for pretty cheap. The next thing we're gonna need is a way to get into the computer. So I've got my trusty Strabido drive, which has all the screwdriver tips that you're going to need to get into this computer and get the work job done. We're going to need a P5 and a T5. And this one's got it in there. And the last thing we're going to need is a way to convert the NVMe drive to the format that this MacBook needs. Now, Apple doesn't always make this easy but they don't make it impossible. At least in these older machines, you could still upgrade some things. In this case, we can't upgrade the, the RAM. We're stuck with the eight gigs, which is fine, but we can upgrade the drive. Now to do that, we're gonna need this guy right here. And this is a Syntec adapter. Syntec is the brand, and it's going to adapt our NVMe drive to this proprietary type of connector that Apple uses inside these MacBook Airs. Now there's lots of brands that make these particular adapters, but from everything I've read, they said use the Syntec brand. It's a couple dollars more and they're only, they're less than $10 anyways, but they're a couple dollars more than the generic brand. But from what I've read, it's worth the extra couple bucks to make sure that it's, it's working. Now another thing we're gonna need before we start taking apart the computer and putting the new hard drive in is to create a boot disk, a USB boot disk with the Mac OS installer on it. Now we have to do this because the web installer that we would normally use does not include the drivers for the NVMe drive. So we're going to create this boot disk and we're going to install macOS from that. 
and I'm going to leave a link in the description below to a video that I created that steps you through step by step how to create a thumb drive with Mac OS installer on it. And you're going to want to do that with your computer before you take it apart, before you start installing the new hard drive. So be sure you follow those steps first, create the drive, and then meet me back here to take apart the computer and install your new drive. And one last thing before we get into this upgrade, you want to make sure that you upgrade your operating system on your device to as high as it can go before you do this. In this case, I've got Mac OS Monterey, which is the current version. And the reason you need a newer version of your operating system is it includes the drivers necessary to read these NVMe drives that we're going to install. So I've already got this upgraded. If you're doing this, make sure you do upgrade this before you start taking it apart. So I've powered the computer all the way down. Don't just shut the lid. You want to make sure that you do a full shutdown on it so there's no power. And now we're going to take these screws out. And like I said, we need a P5 or Pentalobe 5. In my kit, it's actually called a Starbit 1.2. It's the same type of bit. And we're going to take all of these screws off. And my kit actually came with a little magnetic screw keeper so you can keep track. There's only two different types of screws in here. There's going to be short ones and long ones. The long ones are going to go in these two middle back ones here. So we're going to take the screws out, put them to the side, and open this bad boy up. Now I'm sure you've all seen a man use a screwdriver before, so I'm not going to bore you with a fast forward montage. But I did take the 10 screws out, and like I said, you can even make them nice and organized like this on your mat. Or you can just remember that the two long ones do come from the back middle screws. And then once you get all the screws out, it's just as easy as grabbing back from the back here. And then pulling straight up. And that's going to show you the rest of the computer. Alright, so I've spun the computer around to make it easier to work on. And man, look how clean this thing is. I don't even see one drop of dust in this fan here. This thing is in awesome condition. So before we start touching anything, we want to always make sure we disconnect the battery. And on this one right here, we've got a battery tab that we can just pull straight up on. And that pulls that connector right out of there. So I'm going to bend that back just a tiny bit. Make sure that it doesn't come down. And we are ready to work on the drive. So right here is our factory hard drive. That's what we're going to take out and we're going to replace that with our new drive. So now I've put the T5 bit into the driver and that's going to go right in here. And we're just going to loosen up this screwdriver screw that's keeping it in place. We should be able to lift this guy right up just a tiny bit and then wiggle it out of the socket. Now if we take a look at the two drives, the, the factory one versus the one that we bought to replace it with, you can see why we're going to need that adapter. Here's the factory one, which has the missing key space here in the middle almost. And then here's the standard NVMe, which has the key slot here on the far right. So we're going to need this adapter here, this Syntec adapter, which is going to change this. So we're going to add this to this drive and then plug the whole thing right into the motherboard. Now luckily, you can see there's a little bit of size difference also between the two drives. So when you add this adapter, everything's going to line up right in here. So I'll have a link to this Syntec brand adapter in the description below. It's called a NVMe to NGFF adapter. And the NGFF just stands for Next Gen Form Factor. But I think in Apple's case, it probably stands for Not Gonna Freaking Fit. So we're going to add this adapter to our drive. And we're going to slip it in all in one piece, and it's just going to be screwed down and we'll be good to go. So let's add the adapter first, just by pressing it in. And it's got a good, firm, solid feel to it, so there's no doubt in my mind that I've got this placed all the way in. And now we're ready to put it into the computer. So we're just going to put it in at a slight angle, line it up, push it in. I felt a nice, firm click, and now you can see the screw hole there is ready to take that screw and then we'll be done with the upgrade. So I replaced the factory screw and the manufacturer of the adapter does say in their instructions to make sure that this thing is pushed all the way in. They say that most of the time any kind of failure that you find is going to be just simply because you didn't push it all the way in. 
So we've got that seated all the way in, screwed down. I'm going to reattach the battery and then we'll be ready to start working on the new operating system. So I've got the battery plugged back in. Let's go ahead and put the back case back on. And usually when I'm doing this type of hard drive upgrade or any type of upgrade, I usually leave all the screws out until I've gone ahead and turned it on, tested it out, make sure that everything's registering right, and then later I can go ahead and put those screws back in. So I usually just clamshell this thing together, flip it over, and now we're ready to start loading the new operating system on there. So there we go, we have successfully installed Mac OS from a thumb drive onto a brand new hard drive. So the only thing left for this computer is to flip it back over, put all the screws back in, and then it's done. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you learned a lot. Hope you learned what you came here to find out. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. It sure does help our channel out a lot. And if you like this type of content, hit the subscribe button too and become one of our subscribers. Be sure to check out our Family Geekery podcast. We put out new episodes every Tuesday. We cover everything geeky from computers to comics to TV shows to video games. Everything you could want. So thank you again for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.